In inhabited land of agriculture, a multi-skilled species exist. Hence, are invulnerable of becoming extinct, nor endangered. Carabao, with the scientific name of Bobalus bobalis carabanises, these species are the most potent domestic animals in the world, and are one of the beasts that can freely roam its natural habitat. The hope of the farmers and the companion of other species, known for its indefatigable prowess in fecundating and balancing the ecosystem. The Bobulus bobulus carabanensis, or locally known as Carabao, are buffalo water swamp type of mammalian family Bobidae, found in the Philippines and Guam. In the period of 300 to 200 BC, Water buffaloes were most likely brought to the Philippines by Malay emigrants. Mature male carabaos usually weighs 420 to 500 kg, while females weigh 400 to 425 kg. The height of the male withers ranges from 127 to 137 cm. On the other hand, female ranges from 124 to 129 cm. Throughout the study, the researchers observed the following behaviors and characteristics of carabaos in its habitat. Thus, the observation implies that Bobolus bobolus carabinensis are conscious towards its surrounding. We come up with this hypothesis that Bobolus bobolus carabinensis are conscious towards their surroundings is valid and proves right. According to some local farmers, Bobolus bobolus carabinensis, or locally known as carabao, are hyperconscious. They could attack a foreign species with its horn if they sense that they are at risk. In the entire time of observation, the observers were hesitant and terrified to feel the deed of a carabao with set in harsh and uncomfortably eyes, which made observers hold back whenever they are going closer to the species. With this account, the observers scrutinized the deeds of carabao in an estimated distance of 10 meters to ensure safety. Carabaos are distracted to the pera, or commonly known as fly, or any member of an order of insects containing the two-winged or so-called true flies. One of the largest insect orders, it numbers more than 125,000 species that are relatively small with soft bodies. In the observation, the researchers conformed to the hypothesis that Bobolus bobolus carabinensis are instructed to diptera or flies. Due to the submergence of Bobolus bobolus in dry lands and muddy swamps, or locally known as Lutugan, a foul odor emits an it and which attracts diptera. Carabaos cannot be exposed to an area of high humidity. Throughout the stay of the researchers in the farmyard, the observers realized that Bobolus bobolus cannot stand in too much heat. During the hottest part of the day, they would often stay under the trees to avoid too much exposure from the sun. Carabaos tends to wallow in manholes or completely submerge themselves in water with only their nostrils and eyes exposed to avoid stress from heat. With this notion, the hypothesis Bobolus bobolus cannot be exposed too much to sunlight is a valid hypothesis. Hence, the behavior of wallowing in mud helps them remove skin parasites such as leech, biting flies, and other pests. Carabao consumes most of its time by eating grass. Carabao, an herbivorous species, are most likely to graze on scotch grass. St. Augustine grass and macroalgae, herbs, aquatic plants, leaves, agricultural crops, and virus vegetation that grows in long rivers. During the stay of the observers, most bobolus bobolus would often graze in grasses or rest under the patches of dense cover. Hence, it implies that the hypothesis of the observers are valid for bobolus bobolus or herbivorous in nature.
Obolus bobolus carabinensis excrement helps in nurturing soil. Excrement of animals including carabao supports in enriching the soil to produce nurtured plants. Based for the observer's analyzation, Bobolus bobolus has a great impact in fertilizing the soil in which they are on. Moreover, according to some local farmers, the excrement of Bobolus bobolus is an ideal fertilizer for bottle guard or locally known as upo. Hence, they also added that in the farther part of the land where more carabao are staying for farming, vegetables especially bottle guards are healthy and fresh due to carabao's excrements. There is a relationship between the cattle egg web or scientifically known as Bubulcus ibis in carabao. Cattle egg web is a short-legged white egg web with a relatively short yellow bill, usually seen feeding in flocks and grasslands and pastures following cattle or perched in a hunch posture. This species is locally known as Palabra. The cattle egg web that used to ride at the back of the carabao feeds or the peaks that suck the blood of the carabao. According to some local farmers, cattle egret rides at the back of bobolus, bobolus, for the cattle egret gets food by eating the pigs on bobolus, bobolus. Furthermore, bobolus, bobolus gets free from the parasites and other insects. In arguably, both cattle egret and the carabao benefit from this kind of relationship. Okay, of K-stone species. The illustration shows the relationship of carabao to other living species in hierarchical approach. The first and lowest stage of hierarchy is the grass and other vegetation are the common food of the carabao. These food are found in natural lands of their habitats. The second level of hierarchy is the consumer of the first stage. Carabaos have large contribution to ecosystem. In fact, they can make their own ecosystem. Carabao produces waste that contribute to the fertility of the soil, as it is consists of mainly organic materials. These waste have direct benefits to the first stage of hierarchy, as it gives nourishment to the grass and other greeny species. The third stage of hierarchy is the organisms that depend on the life of the second stage. The leech with scientific name Horodenia suck the blood of the carabao as their primary food in order to survive. Likewise, lice and other parasitic organisms. These organisms cause pain and suffering that affect the fertility of survival of carabaos. The most interesting part of this hierarchy is the symbolic relationship of the last stage of the carabao. The cattle egret gets food by eating the ticks. At the same time, the carabao gets cleaning of its parasites. Both cattle egret and the carabao benefit from this kind of relationship. Every ecosystem has certain species that are critical to the survival of the other species in the system. The keystone species could be a huge predator or an unassuming plant, but without them, the ecosystem may not survive. In this study, the researchers concluded that the hierarchy of keystone species fall under categories K-stone predators, K-stone modifier, K-stone prey, K-stone mutualist, and K-stone hosts. Hence, the K-stone species are the following. According to National Geographic, K-stone predators helps in controlling the prey species, which in turn affects the quantity of plants and animals further along the food web. In this study, the K-stone predator is a cattle egret. Corresponding to the observation, cattle egret sprays the leech, diptera, and ticks in the body of the carabao. Moreover, cattle egret helps in removing the provided organisms in the body of carabao. Hence, if removed, it could cause the depletion of the creatures and other species population in which latter could result in a reduction of species diversity. In this study, the observation shows the case stone modifier is the carabao. This was stated 
due to the significance and the purpose the species holds in the hierarchy of keystone species, in which keeps and maintains the habitat for themselves and other species. Moreover, the observation shows that the species Horodenia, or the leech, Diptera, or the fly, and pigs serves the role of the critical food source of the predators in the hierarchy of the keystone species. Furthermore, they are resilient organisms which makes them unsimilar to other types of prey species, but they are more susceptible in becoming rare of extinct within an ecosystem. Keystone mutualists, on the other hand, are the species Bubucus ibis, or the cattle egret, and Bubalus bubalis carabinensis, or the carabao. Hence, they are the two species in the hierarchy of Keystone species, which engage in a reciprocally violent interactions. The heron at the back of the carabao feeds on the takes that suck the blood of the carabao. The cattle egret gets the food by eating the takes. At the same time, the carabao gets cleaning of its parasites. Both egret and the carabao benefit from this kind of relationship. In the hierarchy of cave stone species, reeds, giant weed, burrish, sedges, and the common water hyacinth and rushes serves the role of the cave stone hosts. These species are considered hosts in the hierarchy due to the energy they can produce for the survival of the species. Throughout the study, the researchers witnessed the basic routine of the carabao, and thus, we recommend that these species should have health consultation and assessment for the veterinarians or other specialists, including the current state of its environment. Somehow, through this way, it would make these species extend their life expectancy and maintain their role in the ecosystem. Balance Ecology and sustain abundancy.